A Clarence Thomas will not be teaching at George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C. this fall. The Catholic Supreme Court Justice has been teaching at the law school since 2011 and was expected to co-teach a course on constitutional law. Although the university received calls to fire Justice Thomas following the overturning of Roe versus Wade, the school says its values, it values academic freedom and freedom of expression. And joining us now to discuss is Mark Paletta, co-author of Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in his own words. Mark, welcome back. So great to see you. Tracy, thanks for having me on. So let's talk a little bit more about this decision uh, by Justice Clarence Thomas not to teach the class. What went into that? Well, it's a real loss to the, to the George Washington Law School and to the students. It was a tremendously popular course. It was oversubscribed every year. Uh, to have a justice of the Supreme Court teaching on famous cases, and it's the facts and the backgrounds to those cases and the sort of the the, the consequences of those decisions that the, what the course was about. And a lot of the students who wrote papers in that course, they went on to get those published in, in law review. So it's a real loss to the university. Why did Justice Thomas, I think, decide not to do it? I think it's the, the security safety issues uh, that the left has inflicted on the Supreme Court and conservative justices. And I think it's despicable. But the idea, this rumor or this notion that Justice Thomas was uh, sort of decided not to teach because of this, this uh, what I call sort of this, um, this uh, snowflake petition mm -hmm. uh, by students that don't want to have somebody on their campus uh, who has a different view on something is absolutely, it's an untrue. It didn't have anything to do with his uh, decision not to teach there. Um, but it's a real loss to the university. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, the conservative justices really, they did receive a lot of backlash because of Dobbs, in particular, Justice Thomas, even some racial slurs against him and his family. Um, can you talk more about that and also how he handled that and how his Catholic faith helped him to handle that as well? Sure, and when you say backlash, I mean, let's get be clear, it's, it was assassination attempts. I mean, this is unprecedented. This is what the left does. They want to destroy the Supreme Court. They want to go after these justices. And he, I think he looked at his faith. Uh, you know, as we know, uh, in the back of the book on Justice Thomas, mm -hmm. There's a litany of humility that he has hanging up in his chambers, uh, and it says, you know, Jesus, you know, you know, keep me from wanting to be esteemed, keep me from wanting to be respected, keep me from the fear of being humiliated and 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 um, and and, and um, criticized, mm -hmm. and so that's what drives Justice Thomas. So. You know, these critics, the critics have been after Justice Thomas for 40 years. He's been on the Supreme Court for 30 years. What's astonishing to me or remarkable is how the court has moved in Justice Thomas's direction on almost every single issue over these 30 years. He was writing solo dissents. And now, from the Dobbs decision to the gun decision to uh, the EPA decision on reigning in the administrative state, those are all, you know, issues that Justice Thomas was writing on planting the seeds and the court has now followed in his in his direction. Yeah, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about. We, we weren't able to do it the last time you were on, but his jurisprudence and really what guides him in these decisions. Sure, it's it's faithfulness to the Constitution. It's, it's originalism. It's looking at the text of the Constitution, not substituting his policy choices for what the Constitution commands. And like in Dobbs, it goes back to the states to decide what to do on abortion. And that is a humble justice. That is a justice who understands his role uh, on the Supreme Court and in our society. That's what makes it a, a great country, uh, that the people get to decide on, on issues that aren't spelled out on the Constitution. So, um, you know, he's going to be fine. It's just a loss for George Washington uh, to have a, a, one of our greatest justices in our history not teach at their school. And it's all led by, uh, you know, again, the, the petition had nothing to do with it, but it's the, the general violence of the left that's made it very difficult, I think, for certainly the conservative justices to move about and go out in public or at universities. And that's that's sad. It's sad. It is yeah. sad for sure. You know, one of the things I want to touch on before we run out of time, uh, there's a bill that was re recently that has introduced that would impose term li limits on the justices. Talk to us more about that. And what do you think that signals? Um, it's, it's the left trying to destroy the Supreme Court. There's been nine justices for over 100 years, uh, and you know it's um, you know and it's worked well because they're not getting their way. Mm -hmm. They want to tear apart the Supreme Court. That's what that's about. And this idea of I think it, Justice Thomas would be the first one, <laughs> of course, who would have to retire. It's not going to go anywhere. But I think it tells you more about the left 
and how they don't respect the Supreme Court, how they want it to give you, give them the decisions they want, as opposed to respecting an independent judiciary. So it's, it's, it's kind of a sad day that they're pushing for those types of solutions for Supreme Court that, in my view, had the greatest term in many, many years. Yeah, we have probably about 30 seconds left, Mark. Uh, wondering, though, you know, what can be done about all this? And any final thoughts about Justice Thomas? Justice Thomas is our greatest living American. He's our greatest justice. Um, you, you know, people should read the book, watch the movie on Justice Thomas, learn about Justice Thomas. He doesn't, you know, he, he is the most engaging person, even to the students at that school. They love to debate with Justice Thomas and talk to Justice Thomas. So people should get to know Justice Thomas and the other justices, but in particular Justice Thomas. He's our longest serving justice, and he's had a most remarkable rise, you know, growing up in state sanctioned segregation to reach the Supreme Court. It's a remarkable American story. More Americans should know about it. Absolutely. And every time we see him, he has a smile on his face. Yes. Such a joyful person. Mark, thank you so much for being on. We always appreciate it. Thanks, Tracy. Thank Thanks you. for having me on.